Tim, welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Dual Time Reference 25730ST. You can see and you can purchase this D-Series 36mm Royal Oak on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with accessories included, high resolution images, and naturally complete pricing details for this dual time Royal Oak. Now the watch on my wrist represents what used to be the standard size for a non-jumbo or non-ultra thin Royal Oak automatic. 36 millimeters in the Royal Oak case format wears considerably larger. I always feel it's closer to a 40 in how it sits on the wrist, how it looks and how it feels. Now 36 millimeters is the distance across the round of the case from three to nine, not inclusive of the crown. In terms of thickness, quite frankly, it simply isn't. 10 millimeters is nice and slim. You can note the generous slope of the polished octagonal bezel means that it is easy to slide this one underneath a tight sleeve or dress cuff. Now, from lug to lug, you begin to get a better sense of the watch's dimensions. If you actually measure the edge of the case to the opposite edge, it's going to be a reasonable 46.5 millimeters. But it's this plot, this double intermediate link that links the bracelet to the case that represents the outermost rigid portion of the entire assembly. So the distance across the wrist is defined by that which will not flex. And that distance is a robust 49.5 millimeters from extremity to extremity. And that's how the watch sits across the wrist, which is why I say it wears bigger than 36 millimeters, really closer to 3940. Now it's fairly hefty too, and beautifully rendered because of the integration of bracelet and lug. This was the original concept as Gerald Gent proposed in 1972 at Basel with his prototype Royal Oak. And you can see that this one is true to that form. This one is remarkably crisp in every respect with the bezel bolts of white gold still recessed so there's tons of metal left on the bezel. And the same is true of the bracelet. You always want to see crisp lines of definition on a Royal Oak bracelet. You want to see the original factory polished bevel along the shoulders of the links. You want to see that the spacing between is as it left the factory, not excessive, not stretched, not uneven. And you want to see an even plane of satin finish across each individual link with a smooth transition to the lugs themselves. The acid test is always running your thumb along the bracelet. If you can see the transitions but you can't feel the steps, the bracelet has retained an excellent amount of its original finish in metal. Now you can see that it's a single fold deployant and when closed it's quite secure. It does have a trigger that you have to pull back and only once the trigger is pulled back can you secure it. But once secured, it's confidence inspiring. Now you can see that this watch features a serial number in the high D range. Audemars Piguet started with that original Royal Oak in 1972 with the A series and every 100,000 watches they roll over to another letter. So the D series lasted from about 1987 to 1994. There were two world economic downturns in that period which explains why this luxury brand stayed on the D series for as long as it did. Very rarely would so many years transpire between series changes. Now you can see that the watch features an early example of the Royal Oak dual time dial. First of all, everything is exactly as you would expect in terms of the hairline bevels that flare out at the lugs, the amount of metal retained by the flanks of the bezel. You can see it draws perfectly flush with the edge of the case. And likewise, the gold standard for these white gold bezel bolts is always a visible recess to show you whether the bezel has been finished or refinished. And you can see that each one of these is individually recessed. This watch remains excellent in terms of material balance and material quantity. You also note the dial, a rich and uncommon petite tapisserie in blue. The hobnail pattern is remarkably nuanced and detailed, and it really does pay dividends to explore the watch under a loop when you have the pleasure. Now you can see there is a power reserve scale on the 9 o'clock side of the watch that spans the roughly 38 to 40 hour power reserve of the JLC base movement. You'll also note a second dial for a second time zone. These early watches didn't have the AM PM distinction, but there is a radial date at 2 o'clock. Now, the radial date is advanced by rolling the watch through midnight again and again, kind of like an old day date. There is no AM PM for the dual time function, but the good news is that you can access it independently once the crown is screwed out. So it's set from an intermediate position and you can see how it sets fore and aft. 
a dual time, it is not a GMT because of lack of an AM PM distinction, but it is a beautifully crafted and beautifully balanced dial. The first iteration of the Royal Oak dual time, this is a series that has become a classic and remains in the catalog to this day. The JLC base caliber is thin and fine and continues a long history of cooperation between Cheshire LeCoult, its predecessor company LeCoult, and Audemars Piguet, dating back to Audemars Piguet's origins in the 1870s. Now you can see everything to this watch, the dial by Stern Creations, yes, those Sterns of Patek Philippe, the movement by Cheshire LeCoult, and the design and metal work entirely by Audemars Piguet. This watch is like a horological tour of Switzerland's highlights, and you can have it all in a 36 millimeter case. You can see and you can purchase this Royal Oak Dual Time on our website.